That's the problem is people want to know what the secret is. The secret is you can't do it in a month. I it know. takes eight months and or a year or a lifetime to of consistency, working out every single day and eating properly and, f and truly feeding yourself, not starving yourself, but giving yourself proper nutrition to heal. What's up guys, Derek from PlaceMoreDays.com. Today we're going to be talking about Chris Pratt's body transformation for Guardians of the Galaxy and what I believe he probably did to accomplish that. Chris Pratt's body transformation gets highlighted a lot mainly because it is one of the more staggering transformations in Hollywood. Like, granted, it's not you know, a Kumail Nanjiani transformation or something insane or Amir Khan or something like that, but it is pretty substantial nonetheless and still brings about the question was it enhanced did he do something in order to you know peel that much fat off and build all that muscle and people often put these side-by-side -side comparisons up of him completely out of shape and then him you know pretty pretty damn ripped and especially the shot in guardians of the galaxy where he has full six-pack and he's you know striking distance of single digit body fat percentage whereas not that long prior was he you know actually obese in parks and recreation and some of his other roles and what often goes overlooked is chris wasn't always fat i haven't always been fat which is really fun and really great i love eating food and drinking beer and having fun with my life but um, i was also kind of depressed a little bit when i was fat and like i think there's probably people out there who can agree and understand what that feels like like if you go back to the start of his career in everwood at 26 years old he actually looked pretty damn good already here you can see him as a lifeguard presumably or he's just sitting there i can't really tell tell what this is exactly but he's you know visible ab cuts there he's not uh that far off of what he's at now with his like full-time training regime so if we consider the fact that him at 26 years old wasn't just <laughs> like he wasn't starting from being a morbidly obese you know adult and then just suddenly becoming this ripped guy in guardians of the galaxy he's he's had a decent baseline before that essentially looks no different than what he looks like now peaked for guardians of the galaxy he probably has five to ten pounds more muscle now than he did in his mid-20s but what often goes overlooked is his transition between the two it's not like he just went from point a to point b fat to lean he went from lean to really out of shape fat to lean again and here in strangers with candy he's a bit softer than he was in everwood and as he gets older he starts to just trend up in body weight and just become softer and softer and bride wars you can see it again he's not really losing muscle necessarily but he's just starting to packs on you know layer after layer of additional fat and it sort of peaks and culminates in parks and recreation at 30 years old where he is very well known at this point in this role and was you know being started to recognize as a celebrity and whatnot and this is what everyone thinks his baseline was what they don't realize is how off track he was from his healthy lifestyle and from actually trying to be in shape in parks and recreation he got very very off track to the point where he was you know being used in <laughs> comedy material in the show just showing how out of shape he was and here he's on the track this is you know one of the most famous scenes that is used as his before shot at 33 years old in 2012 this is where everything sort of you know the pinnacle of his fat gain essentially and serves as you know the baseline representation of what many people believe to be what his body is supposed to look like without realizing that he's actually you know a relatively fit guy in his mid-20s with visible abs still and only thereafter did he really start to try and tighten things up and things sort of you know yo-yoed back and forth a bit in zero dark 30 he purportedly lost about 15 pounds and gained a bit of muscle and then in delivery man he gained all the weight back and then some and this then became his new personal record of fat accrual, apparently, where he weighed in at approximately 295 pounds, supposedly. I don't know how accurate these statistics are about his weight, but like that seems pretty damn high, honestly. He's six foot two. It's not like he looks massive by any means. So I'm not sure how accurate that really is, but purportedly, once he stripped down for Guardians of the Galaxy, he lost 60 pounds 
while simultaneously gaining some muscle and ended up weighing in at around 233 pounds. And this is the scene most people refer to when they look at the final outcome of his before and afters. And then after this point, he was known for the guy who, you know, went from fat as hell to shredded essentially and maintained it for the rest of his career through lifestyle choice and diet intervention and whatnot. And you know, serves as a inspiration for many people to get in shape. And that's awesome. The statistic though, losing 60 pounds, honestly, it looks like he lost 60 pounds. I'm finding it hard to believe he weighs 233 at six foot two and is this lean, but I believe proportionally, he just has a favorable fat distribution whereby his abs look leaner than the rest of his body at this body fat percentage. Realistically, he's probably 14%-ish. You know, and that's just a rough estimate. Obviously, that could be, you know, plus or minus three to four percent at minimum. That's just depending on the way his body, you know, has individual specific fat distribution. And but roughly, you know, if you have visible abs, you're within striking distance, at least of single digits. And it's impressive. It's not easy to maintain a body composition like this year round. Obviously, he peaked for a role here, but. He's one of the few actors who has shown to, following his role, maintain pretty much the same body composition year round. And he's, you know, stuck to his regimen. And he said many times publicly the reasons why he, you know, finally really embraced the, you know, fit lifestyle and, you know, trying to maintain that physique thereafter. And it wasn't just for peaking for roles. A lot of it had to do not just from a health standpoint, but feeling good about himself, which is a very, very reasonable you know, and justified um, example of someone who has not really done an unhealthy approach to this whole body transformation thing you often see in Hollywood, these transformations that are so drastic and they diet so damn hard and train so damn hard, they end up taking, you know, like years off from the gym after and just eating themselves into oblivion. Like I did the video recently on Gerard Butler. He, t he had to take a year off of training after 300 because he was so exhausted with the process. Pratt, on the other hand, has gone the complete opposite of what 99% of other celebrities are doing and has maintained the same body composition essentially for the you know, rest of his career to date and serves as a great example and um, you know inspiration probably to many to get in shape. And personally... I also think it was indicative of natural progression, which is an even better reference point for those who were, you know, looking up to celebrities for inspiration to start their own healthy lifestyle and adhere to diet and lifestyle practices that are conducive to maintaining a, you know, attractive body composition and a healthy body composition that you feel good about and is also going to be healthy for you long term. I can't really think of a better example off the top of my head because I don't think this is somebody who abused drugs in order to achieve his body. I don't think this is somebody who crash dieted himself to the point that it wasn't sustainable year round. I don't think this is somebody who did any kind of extreme modulation of his lifestyle practices to a point that it wasn't sustainable long term. And thus it, you know, serves as a great reference point for men who are looking to you know achieve a body composition similar to him he's actually a good role model in that regard and if you go back to his beginning sure he was you know in good shape off the bat but everyone falls off the wagon at some point and he showed that even somebody who gets so off track to the point that they're almost peaking at 300 pounds of you know morbidly obese levels of body fat can strip it back down within a not unreasonable time frame and get back to where they were in their early 20s and look better than they did in their early 20s just by getting back on track and sticking to that lifestyle long term in a sustainable way and maintain that and you know look very very impressive without the need for exogenous anabolics which i don't think he did i think this is very indicative of natural progression from day one i think to date he's probably packed on you know netted around you know 10 to 12 pounds of actual contractile tissue from uh the start of his career even as far back as everwood where he was you know lean visible abs not you know muscle bound by any means but he's you know gained a respectable amount and maintained a even lower body fat percentage arguably and this is indicative of healthy natural progression in my opinion and is representative of what you would expect from somebody who's not 
blasting for roles, doing unsustainable yo-yo diet practices and leveraging anabolics heavily to the point where they're, you know, unable to even maintain a shadow of their self from their peaked movie roles following thereafter in their actual daily lives where they're, you know, if they're trying to set an example for all the people that look up to them in the world or whatever, because I guess people still do that to celebrities. Obviously they look up to these people and they have millions of followers. He's showing that this is actually a sustainable thing. It's not something you have to fucking crash diet for six months for the role. And then you can't do it thereafter, or you need to, you know, heavily leverage anabolics in order to accomplish it. I think it was natural. And I think he's a good example of natural fitness. So I don't know. I could be wrong. Take from that what you will. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you think Chris Pratt has been natural for the duration of his career? Do you think he used anything to peak for Guardians of the Galaxy or, you know, leveraged anabolics thereafter in a hormone replacement therapy context as he got later into his 30s? Like he's now early 40s now, actually, I think. And he still looks great. He looks better than he did in his 20s still to date. And, you know, some would argue that that's not going to be possible without HRT. Some people think he used gear just to do the transformation for Guardians of the Galaxy. Personally, I don't think so. But, you know, any and all comments down below are appreciated because they help the algorithm. So regardless if you agree, disagree, let me know. If you disagree, let me know when you think he sauced, what you think he took, and why. What were the flagship indicators for you? Um, please like and subscribe if you haven't. Helps the algorithm, like I mentioned. And follow me on Instagram, at moreplates underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, BitChute, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts, wherever I am. If you want to support the channel, I have my turnkey pre-workout formulas and my nootropic formulas for cognitive enhancement linked in the video description below as well as any other partnerships I have set up with other affiliate companies that I work alongside. The nootropics and pre-workouts are my own formulas with my own company. So if you want to support me, you can find that stuff in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.